The Incredulity of Saint Thomas was painted by Baroque master of chiaroscuro Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, often simply known as Caravaggio. It was painted sometime between 1601 and 1602. This painting depicts the disbelief of Saint Thomas, an apostle of Christ, as he sees Jesus post-crucifixion. It portrays the moment at which Saint Thomas stops doubting the good news that the Lord really has returned, like the other apostles told him. To understand this painting, it helps to know the whole of John 20:24 20, to 29, which I'll read now. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. In this painting, Saint Thomas, rather gruesomely, has stuck his finger into Christ's open wound from the jabbing of the spear into his side. The other apostles watch intently. It isn't certain whether Saint Thomas actually poked the wound like this. Christ definitely invited him to, which may have been sufficient. Theologians do argue about whether he took Christ up on the offer before he actually believed. So, the painting itself. The painting's composition is intense. It is densely packed with no background details at all, just relative darkness. The sole focus is this one intense moment. Let's go on a tour of that moment. The gruesome nature of the painting brings home Christ's sacrifice to mankind, which was a brutal, visceral sacrifice. The lack of a halo around Christ's head adds to this. The lack of halo around his head also lends itself to how indulgent Christ is being in allowing St. Thomas to do this. He himself states how important it is to believe through faith rather than earthly sight, yet here he is humbling himself and humouring St. Thomas anyway. St. Thomas's forehead is wrinkled and his eyes wide, suggesting he has just realised that this really is the Lord, like he did in the passage we just heard. But if you look at St. Thomas's gaze, his eyes are a bit blank, a bit soulless arguably. He looks even more dead than the man in front of him, who has literally just come back from actual death. Perhaps his glazed look means he is on the brink of waking from the fugue of unbelief. Perhaps he is processing deeply, staring into space. Perhaps it has also just hit him that he is rudely poking around inside the wound of Jesus Christ himself. Christ's guiding hand could be seen as Christ's imploring Thomas to touch the wound, which is what he literally says. Christ guiding St. Thomas's hand to the wound also possibly suggests that even with his own senses, Thomas cannot believe unaided by Christ. Earthly senses alone are not enough. To believe is to be guided by Christ. German art historian Walter Friedlander supported this idea, citing how Caravaggio frequently uses small gestures like this to convey the realism of his scenes whilst simultaneously communicating a wider theme, in this case that Christ aids St. Thomas's belief. The finger in Christ's side is analogous to the soldier's spear piercing him. Humanity's sin and disbelief killed him, and here we see disbelief piercing him again. Perhaps this suggests that Christ is also somewhat hurt by how weak St. Thomas's faith is, even if he isn't making an obvious expression of literal physical pain, as much as he knew this was coming. Peter Chrysologus, Bishop of Ravenna and renowned early theologian, took this a step further, saying how Thomas's probing finger is metaphorically reopening this wound, and is a real slap in the face to Christ and all he has done for Thomas as a disciple. Why does the harsh curiosity of a servant repeat the tortures imposed by the rage of persecutors? This literal tangibility of Christ, shown through both the probing finger and the light shining on his body, demonstrates how tangible Christ is in the Christian faith, even after his earthly death. It also adds another level of gruesomeness, that gritty realism that Caravaggio both loves and found appropriate for this particular scene, and I'm inclined to agree. The hands of the other two apostles cannot be seen, however, showing they do not need to poke the wound to believe, like the incredulous Saint Thomas. However, they are staring with some intensity. You could see this in one of two ways. Either they are just staring at this gory spectacle as curious onlookers, or they harbour some disbelief themselves with their wide, searching eyes. And without stating their doubt, without going that far, they let Saint Thomas verify their own quiet disbelief for them by being the one to touch the wound. 
This painting is gritty, hard-hitting, and realistic. It lacks fluffy symbolism, as is fitting for its subject matter, the gritty, hard-hitting reality of the brutal death of Jesus. As such, it was copied over and over throughout Caravaggio's life and long after his death. It found itself in the galleries of many famous nobility over the years, including Cardinal Del Monte, Siriaco Mattel, and Prince Ludovici, who all owns some version of it. The incredulity of St. Thomas portrays a brilliant microcosm of the struggle of faith in Christianity, as well as a specific biblical passage with an important set of messages for Christians. Its gruesome nature also highlights the brutality suffered by Christ, the sacrifice of God in the death of the Son on earth. I really enjoyed doing this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Till next time, and God bless.